Now we are coming to the hadith that seems to suggest that this is the point. This hadith is giving us the information that this is the point from where the malhama has started. Even though this hadith may refer to any other war as well. But the scale of destruction that's described in this hadith is phenomenal and it seems to be the case of malhama. What is this hadith? A muttafaq alay hadith of both Bukhari and Muslim, a hadith that is present in both Bukhari and Muslim, is called muttafaq alay, the highest most authenticity of any hadith. Now, this hadith says, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, the hour will not come, means the Qiyamah will not come to pass before the river Euphrates. I will show you the map of river Euphrates. The river Euphrates dries up to unveil a mountain of gold. Now, this sounds juicy. Wait. The river Euphrates, is, there is a mountain of gold hidden beneath Euphrates. I'm going to talk about this in a few seconds. And the hadith goes on to say, for this mountain of, when this river, river Euphrates is going to unveil this mountain of gold, people are going to fight for it. Whether Muslims or non-Muslims is not written over here. So people are going to fight for it. Now, every man uh, that will be fighting, 99 out of 100 will die. So 99% of death, okay, out of the fighting people. And amongst them, each will be saying, that maybe I will be the last one standing here, so all of the mountain of gold will belong to me. Perhaps I may be the the only one to remain alive. So the the same hadith with a different word, wordings uh, is says that the time is near when the river Euphrates will dry up to a to unveil a treasure of gold. Whosoever may be alive at that time should not take any of that gold. Okay, so all of the Jews suddenly fell off. Okay, nobody, this is a command of Prophet Muhammad or the suggestion of Prophet Muhammad but it will not come true because people will go and fight over it. So we, we know that uh, when I said this will not come true, I meant about the command, not about the hadith. So the prophecy will come true that the river of uh, Euphrates, it's, uh, it would be on your screen, you could see the river of Euphrates, it starts from uh, Turkey and East Turkey. You, you know, recently, uh, in Turkey, there was the news of, uh, I haven't been following that news later, but there, there had been a news of uh, a mount, a, 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 I, I don't remember how much, uh, a great amount of gold being discovered. I should have researched about this actually before this video. Uh, it just came to my mind right now. So there was a news of this big reservoir of gold uh, being discovered in Turkey. When I heard of this news, immediately to my mind came this hadith. Uh, and I was thinking that where exactly did they find this? Okay, is this because Euphrates, a part of Euphrates is in Turkey. And a quick Google search told me, no, it is in uh, some somewhere near to center, central Turkey or to the west, to, to uh, central, west, central, I don't know what, do, what, do, what would they call it uh, in that land. Uh, but obviously this Euphrates is to the east. So. But this actually made me uh, believe because people often happen to say that this gold is the black gold, which is the petroleum. So petroleum is called as black gold. So that's what is being, that is what is going to be discovered under River Euphrates. But this news recently, very recently, a few months ago, made me actually believe that, wow, perhaps there will be real gold hidden beneath Euphrates. Once it, uh, I mean, how come it is? gold reservoirs do become discovered now and then so there might be real gold there will be i believe real gold but this theory of black gold petroleum i do not completely dismiss it but i go i put a lot 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 more weightage on real gold being discovered in river euphrates not in turkey most probably not in turkey the turkey goes on to flow inside iraq it even enters iran a little bit and flows uh, in the ocean, so in the sea, Arabian Sea. Uh, so, if you if you look at it, this hadith says that people will go and fight over it. People will go and fight over it. Yesterday's hadith. If we want to back project today's hadith on yesterday's hadith as well. Yesterday's hadith told us that there will be three people, Iraq, 
there will be Syria and there will be Yemen, they will fight amongst each other. Are these fighting for this? Doesn't seem so. If it said Iraq, Iran, Iraq, Persia, then it would be more like, okay, Iraq, Persia and Turkey are fighting for this. <laughs> but Iraq, Syria and Yemen, it seems more like a fight over what's in the, the, the peninsula, the Arabian Peninsula region. Anyways, so now we can... Or it might be a son of a Khalifa is dying, so there are three governors in these three lands. It might also be true that one governor is the main Khalifa, the Khalifa is, 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 is administering this main Arabian Peninsula, and he has one son in Yemen, one son in Iraq, one son in Syria. It might be true as well. Here, the Hadith of Gold. You see, if the Hadith, if, if the Gold Reservoir is found in Iraq, are on the border of Iran and Iraq, what is going to happen in current scenario? Okay, there is no government in Iraq right now, which is, you know the situation there. What is going to happen? So, what kind of war will happen? You, you, can, you, you can imagine. It will be like a boon for those organizations working over there, and those organizations will try to, to capture it all. Am I not wrong? And they will try to capture it and become the the recognized caliphate or something like that am i not wrong and what will happen then so if it if it is discovered right now we can see that 99 percent of people dying there will be a literal war of fist but if that is true then i do not think then this is i do not think that this would be malhama i think then this would be a separate war and malhama would come later on so there are two opinions about this that this war itself is the beginning of Malhama and it will lead to Malhama ultimately and the second opinion is that no, this is not Malhama. Now, uh, another hadith I'm going to quote you that is going to give the answer to this question that whether this hadith is Malhama or not. So you remember in this hadith of uh, Euphrates River, Gold Reservoir and Euphrates River had a sentence that there will be 99 people will die out of 100 people fighting. The same ratio of 199 to 100 is found in another hadith in another war and that war certainly is Malhama. So then we can relate that both of these war are actually Malhama. So this second hadith is from Sahih Muslim. It's mentioned in Sunan Ahmad as well. Sahih Muslim 2899. Uh, Ibn Mas'ud, he is the narrator and uh, a, 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 a very stormy day was there and uh, it was too, so dark and a man came out shouting that Qiyamah has come. Ya Ibn Mas'ud, Qiyamah has, Qiyamah has come. Ya Ibn Mas'ud, Qiyamah has come. And Ibn Mas'ud said, shut up. Qiyamah will not come. Not shut up. He did not say shut up. But Qiyamah will not come until these things happen. What things happen? Qiyamah will not come until people will not be able to divide their inheritance. Okay? What is this? I will come to it. People will not be happy. Second reason. People will not be happy over Ghanima. Oh, ghanima means a, 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 an amount that is that comes from the war, okay? Means war booty. <clears throat> the third is, a room will gather forces against Muslims and Muslims will gather forces against them. Okay, this is heading towards Malhama. Four, there will be a severe fighting. The Muslims will send a battalion to fight them none of whom shall return and the same will happen the second day the same will happen the third day muslims are sending the battalion to fight the christians okay from not christians but room okay uh, not necessarily in rome not necessarily in europe and from other hadith we can understand in syria actually and muslims are sending their battalion in syria first battalion nobody comes home second battalion goes nobody comes home third battalion goes nobody comes home on the fourth day or fourth time at well is, as well it can be uh, translated because yom in arabic can also be period right so in the fourth period of war or fourth day allah shall grant victory to the muslims this will be a battle the likes of which has never been seen before this sentence makes us sure that this battle is malhama this will be a battle the likes of which the, it has never been seen before means it is malhama malhama is the greatest battle and this hadith is going to tell us the ratio of 99 and 100 uh so much so that if a bird is flying the, the battle will be so severe that if a bird is flying over the land it will fall down now why would a bird flying in the sky fall down is there radiation in the sky is there bombs falling or 
you know, there is a far-fetched interpretation that people uh, beforehand did. Some people said arrows will be thrown, but uh, we know that's no, not the case. But uh, some people have said that there will be so many bodies down there that the bird will keep on flying, 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 trying to search what is there to sit on. Because bird doesn't want to sit on a corpse, right? Vultures and eagles would sit, but normal sparrow won't sit. So it will be flying, flying, flying and f not find any space on the land where a man is not there and finally it will get tired and fall down but the other interpretation back in those days there was no bomb okay so now when we look at the modern technology and then think the bird will fall down this shows that this will be a severe fight and the most severe fighting ever seen this shows that there will be air raids okay so this fight shows that this will be not just a hand combat, not just on the ground, but even in the air, it might even be, you can think what I'm thinking of. And then the hadith says, out of a family of 100, 99 will die and one will survive. This is the ratio in that hadith. So this indicates either both of the war have the same uh, death ratio, in that case, how come one is more severe than the other? I believe both are the same war. If both are the same war, then means Malhama is started by discovery of gold in Euphrates. That's why I told you that when this news came up, I was scared. I was scared because I immediately thought of this hadith. So that is the point that starts, that kicks off Malhama. In my opinion, I'm... I'm, I'm almost sure about it. I'm sure about it. You are ready to reject it depending upon if you will. These are only interpretations. Hadith is not saying that Malhama will be kicked off by this event. There will be a war kicked off by this event. But Malhama, I have reconciled it. And I'm not the first one. I'm not the only one to reconcile it. There, there have been these kinds of reconciliations before as well. The actual Malhama is by the, uh, the Romans, right? Now, who are these Romans? Today, I don't think that time is sufficient to discuss who are the Romans. I will discuss about who are the Romans. Because this is a discussion in itself. Romans were you were, were people, the Byzantine Empire back then. Now, there is no Byzantine Empire. Actually, people of Rome were not called Romans by the Arabs. The Byzantine Empire was called as Romans. Now, there is no Byzantine Empire. So, whether this Roman refers to Christians, point number one, opinion number one, opinion number two, whether this refers to the people living in those land where... Byzantines lived back then. Opinion number three, a very famous speaker these days upon eschatology says that they are the Orthodox Christians because the Romans believed in that Orthodoxy. Sorry, because the uh, by Byzantines believed in that Orthodoxy and the same believers of that Orthodoxy, not exactly the same, but uh, their descendants, their their offshoots are the Russians. So Russians are those. Uh, another opinion about it is. Uh, Sim this this is actually interesting the vatican city <laughs> because rome is the uh, vatican city is right in in the in rome right if you know this if you know the geography of vatican city you can say it's inside rome actually and then you you know that vatican city is the head of catholics so america is catholics for example so this is this is also an interpretation interpretation that's coming in modern days so who are the rome is a separate Discussion. I actually already discussed it. Most of what I could say, uh, what's remaining is just to tell you my opinion, and I actually do not have a clear opinion on this. Anyways, I have the opinion that it simply refers to the people up north. That's my opinion, actually. So I have just finished the discussion of Rome as well. The people up north. So it might be even the even Constantinople and up everything up uh, would refer to uh, Romans in the mind of. Uh, the Arabs because they wouldn't call Christians as Romans because Christians were there in Habasha in Ethiopia and they wouldn't call them Romans okay Romans was a concept they would call the Roman dynasty was not called as Romans because they would call the Byzantines as Romans as well so everyone up north would be referred to I would say all Europeans were considered Romans by the uh, Arabs that's my opinion over here so basically European that's actually <clears throat> That's actually what uh, it seems to me from this uh, description Roman and uh, it may have the backing of America America might be leading it as well. I do not know it But actually if Constantinople is falling as I said in the last uh, episode so Europe is the one which seems to have come from north 
right? It's Europe which seems to have come down. So these are interpretation. I'm not preaching hate and I'm not preaching hate against Europe. Till the time they are peaceful, we are at peace. Okay? I'm talking about something described in our Hadith book and it has been described and it is a tradition to study these so that when these happen, then our Iman will become stronger. Okay. Why are signs of Day of Judgment told to us? One of the reasons, one of the great reasons is when they happen, when we see Burj Khalifa, our Iman does go up. Okay, because Hadith says that if these barefooted Arabs will compete in building the tallest structure, tall structures, tall buildings, okay, we, I see this, this Kingdom Tower and Burj Khalifa competition and my Iman goes very up. So, I'm not, uh, that's a disclaimer, I'm not preaching hate against Europe, I'm just telling the Romans would be Europeans according to Arabs in my opinion. Now, this, these two Hadiths combined together would suggest that there will be a war, there will be a, a, a probably somewhere in Iraq or in the border of Iraq, Iran, somewhere uh, there will be a discovery of uh, gold reservoir in Euphrates and then the Europeans will be the one to raid. Okay, it might be true. I would not be surprised. Oh, uh, there is no surprise actually. It's obvious that these nations themselves will fight too because Prophet Muhammad specifically asked us that Muslims should not take any part of it. Means non-Muslims are also going to come to compete for it. Point number one. Point number two, Muslims too are going to compete for it. That's why Prophet Muhammad is telling us do not compete for it. Okay. So, <clears throat> Okay, that, that's, that's all. So I believe these uh, Iraq and Iran and pro probably Turkey and all will uh, fight for this gold reservoir. And because of this, Turkey might fall under the hands of Europe. So right in the beginning of uh, Melhama, Turkey might fall. And that's why in the end, Muslims are cons conquering back Constantinople according to previous days' hadiths. So we see all of these hadiths are actually supporting each other and creating an, a new opinion. So that's all for today. I will come again with another hadith and build upon this whole uh, eschatology once again in the next video, inshallah ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.